Hi, my name is Patrick. Um, just for a show of hands, like, don't be shy. How many of you like play video games? Ooh, yeah, awesome. That's more than I thought. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> don't worry. Um, I'm leading into it. So, did you know that in a study made in 2015 by the Entertainment Software Association, over 155 million Americans regularly play video games? Now, I don't know about you, but to be honest, I was expecting a larger number, but you know, some people don't know what they're missing out on. <laughs> Anyways, this is a Moogle. Yeah, a Moogle. What about it? <laughs> Anyways. Moogles are the adorable mascots of Final Fantasy. And Final Fantasy is this huge franchise that has a fan base reaching up to the millions. And that fan base has evolved into like a community with its own culture. And hopefully, by learning about this Moogle and the history of Final Fantasy, you all will be able to find out a little bit more about the community and be able to understand it better. And. So to start off, I'm going to tell you all the history of Final Fantasy and this Moogle, and then I'm going to show you how I identify with this culture. Now, now the show of hands, I know, I'm making, I'm making you guys work. How many of you know what Final Fantasy is? Now that's the number I was expecting. <laughs> um, Final Fantasy, for those of you that don't know, is a huge sci-fi fantasy video game franchise that's almost 30 years old by Square Enix, this huge video game developing and publishing company. It was created in 1987 by Hironobu Sakaguchi, and the first Final Fantasy was actually his last ditch attempt to succeed in the gaming industry, because at, th at that point, it managed to succeed uh, much to his happiness and much to our happiness, as we would soon find out, because it's when he realized that it wasn't about the video game, just making a game for everyone to play, but making a story for that game to tell. And it's, it, I am not exaggerating when I tell you that there are tons of Final Fantasies. There have been 15, not even including the multiple sequels and spin-offs, and they branch off to different genres such as shooters, um, racing games, and so forth. And these Moogles have taken on different shapes and forms throughout the games and have played different roles from just being characters that you talk to, NPCs, to being delivery post Moogles, and engineers, and even royalty, such as, now, I haven't made up this name, but Good King Mogulmog the 14th. It's cute, he's like this big and he has like a crown. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> What makes Final Fantasy interesting is that even though there's been 15 games, each and every one of them has a unique story, and each and every one of them is absolutely in in captivating to those who play it. Like, in the seventh game, you have to fight against a corrupt company and a man bent on destroying the world with a meteor while trying to face your own humanity and come to terms with it. In the 14th, you're just a regular adventurer who's trying to fight against this empire with a weapon that can level cities in a matter of seconds. And then in the 15th one, coming out September 30th, um, you're a prince trying to return to your kingdom and reclaim the throne from this empire that's invading it currently. But before I go on about that, I'm going to tell you how I identify with this culture. So my first game when I was around 7 or 8 was Final Fantasy VII. Of course, that's like the game everyone knows. And I'm not going to lie, I was only like 7 or 8 at the time anyways. So. I didn't really understand the story. I mean, come on, I'm eight years old. Why should I care about coming to terms with my humanity? <laughs> Just deep inflection. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, what was really impressive to me, though, was like the big swords, the giant monsters you'd fight, and you'd be hailed as a hero. And while many kids wanted to grow up to be an astronaut or a sports player, like a football player or something, I wanted to be a hero or an adventurer, you know, fighting big monsters and being a hero to everyone. Now, unfortunately, as I grew up, I realized those dreams wouldn't completely come true. But it taught me really important things, such as to value friendship and also to love travel. I mean, I, I love traveling anywhere outside of the US. And sometimes I wish that like, when I get older, I can travel there again. And, well, <laughs> before I tell you all about my wanderlust, I'm going to wrap things up. I want to tell you all another thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Final Fantasy has also helped me stay in touch with my friends. And 
because for their 14th game, which was an MMO, you're able to you know play with other people and such. And I am kind of guilty saying this, but I have over 400 hours of playing it in like since I got in January. And I'm gonna start wrapping <laughs> things up before y'all question my life choices. I can see your faces. I know you're judging. <laughs> so hopefully, with all that I've told you, you'll be able to have a better grasp of Final Fantasy and its community and the culture. And I just want you to know that throughout this entire speech, I haven't exaggerated once, it's been a big part of my life. It's taught me how to like be the best I can be and it's hopefully taught other people in the community that. And I'm gonna wrap things up with this little quote here from Zach Fair in Final Fantasy Crisis Core. And that's, follow your dreams. Hero, if you wanna be a hero, you need to have dreams and honor. No matter what, always protect that honor. Thank you.